Hey, game makers! I love eventing, and as much as I know there are probably 10 quadrillion minimap plugins out there, we're going to be looking at a fun way to do it with events, and added a few extra features, too. For this example, we'll be using the Misk Adventures world map. First, right-click the map name, save as image. Next, go to the folder it exported to, and open the picture with your image editing program of choice. I don't know about you, but I like the idea of having my maps look more... map, you know? You don't have to do this for your map. Redesigning the look of your graphic is completely up to you. But we'll be making our map look a bit like it's on paper. The image I'm using is just an example I pulled from the Googles. We want to stretch it across our entire map, and then put it beneath our map tiles image. We'll also be setting the map tile image to luminosity, because I like the effect. Select the contents of the paper picture layer, and then click on your map tiles layer. Right click the image and click select inverse, and then hit delete on the keyboard. Doing this will basically make it so the map only appears inside the, the map. We'll then merge the two layers, and set an inner glow on it, to make the edges look a little dim. If you need to know our exact settings, feel free to pause and check them out. But it's really up to you on how you want to make it look. Okay, now back to things we need to do. To make a mini map, we're going to need to resize it. Our map's tile height and width are 140 by 140. We'll talk about why this matters later, but we'll want to make our image a multiple of this. So, 140, or 280, etc. Now, because this is a huge map, we don't want it to be too teeny tiny, so we'll be setting it to 280. That is, two times bigger than the map's actual tile dimensions. The multiple we change it by is important, so make sure to remember it. Now, just save it as a .png under your game's picture folder. Back in the Game Maker, create a new parallel event on your map and go to Show Picture in the Event command. Make sure the number is set to 1, and find your minimap image. Click OK, and click OK. This will effectively show you a minimap in-game. However, this is kind of really useless and boring, isn't it? Know what that means? It's feature time! Feature 1. We'll be creating an icon to represent the player on the minimap. Create another parallel event. In the Event commands, go to Control Variables, and create a player X and a player Y variable. Set them to game data, character, player, and map X and map Y respectively. Click OK. That's not all though. Underneath these, we'll want to set up two more control variables. As before, set them to our player X and player Y variables. But this time, make sure to make the operation checked on mul, that is, multiply. As mentioned before, in this example, our mini-map is twice as big as our map's normal dimensions. That means we have to set the constant to 2. If our map was the same size ratio to the map tiles, we'd set this to 1. If our image was 3 times as big, we'd set it to 3. And so on. Again, we're setting this to 2 because our mini-map image is twice as big as it should be. This will make sure the player's icon will adjust to match the increased size. Make sure to do this for both the X and the Y variables. Lastly, add another show picture command. This time, set it to picture number 2. The image we're using is just a 10 by 10 little circle. As long as the image is tiny, you should be fine. Set it to designation with variables, and enter your player X and then player Y variables. We're also going to be changing the position origin to center. This should help it line up a little better. And there you go, it moves when we move. Feature number 2. Not everyone wants their minimap in the top left corner, right? To change its location, let's head back into our event that shows the minimap image. Let's edit the show picture command and change the X and Y direct designation. We'll be setting X to 10 to push it away from the edge of the screen a bit, and then 280 for Y to push it down and set it into the bottom left corner. You can adjust these numbers how you see fit, but just make sure to remember them. Now, over in our player icon event, We'll be adding in variables to do the same thing over here. Add yet another set of control variable commands for our player X and player Y variables. For these ones, we'll want the operation set to add. We'll be using the same coordinates we entered for the world map graphic. So in this case, 10 for the player X variable, and 280 for the player Y variable. Then just click all the OKs, and everything should appear in the bottom left corner. Feature 3. Objective markers. Basically, these can let the player know that, oh look, there's a side quest in the town! Or, oh hey, the plot wants me to go to that evil looking ominous castle next! Among other things. Create another parallel event, and make sure to place it within a tile or two above 
where you'd like the objective to be placed. In the event commands, create another two variables, this time guide icons X and guide icons Y, and have them set to game data, characters, and this event. And again, map X and map Y respectively. Now remember all those modifications we made to our player icon events? That increases the size multiplier and moves it to the bottom of the screen? We're going to need to add all those to this event too. But instead of player X and Y, we need to set them to our guide icons X and Y variables instead. When that's done, show picture again, increasing the number. This time we're at picture number three. For this example, we're using a subquest graphic. This one is 22 by 22 pixels. But again, as long as it's pretty small, it should be fine. Change the designation with variables to our quest icon ones. You can also set the position origin to center again. Then click OK. That actually looks a bit low, so we're going to actually move the event up a tile. We can also have multiple quest icons showing at once. Let's just copy that one and paste it over this nice demonic castle of doom over here. To create more of these, all you need to change is... Increase the show picture number, so in this case, we'll change it to 4. And we're also going to change it to a plot quest icon instead, but that's not necessary. And now, both of them will show up on the minimap. Ideally, if you're using these for quests, you'll want to use switches and variables to turn them on and off depending on what quest you have ongoing. Last feature. You know, sometimes I just don't want a minimap. And sometimes I want my minimap to give me loads of map details. So let's make an option to toggle between normal minimap, big minimap, and no minimap. On yet another parallel event, create a conditional branch. Set it to if button page up is pressed. Inside, let's create another branch. We'll need another variable, in this case, called map size. At zero, our minimap will be normal. At one, our minimap will be big. And at two, our minimap will vanish. We're going to set the branch to say, if map size is lower than constant two, do this, else do that. Inside this branch, add a control variable command for map size to add one. Click OK, and you'll also want to add a 10 frame wait command after this, so the game has time to process that, hey, the player clicked a thing, wow! Copy paste these under else, but for this one, change the variable settings to constant zero. This will tell the game to keep increasing the variable to toggle between the map settings. But if it gets to the end, where the map vanishes, the variable will reset, so if you click it again, it will go back to the first setting. And now to actually implement this! On our minimap graphic event, copy and paste the page. Set this one to start if map size equals one. The image we're using for this is an upscaled version of the minimap with some text. The dimensions are 560 by 560. This is just smaller than our screen resolution, which makes this about as big as I can make it to keep it on screen. This is also four times bigger than the map's original 140 size. Keep that in mind. Now, we need this to show up in the middle of the screen and make sure all of our other events go with it. My specific resolution width is 1000. This means we'll want to start drawing the picture at X250, basically one fourth of the way through the screen size, to make sure the center of the image lines up with the center of the screen, and then make Y set to zero. Copy this page now, and make the new one set to turn on with map size variable at two. Here, you can either erase the picture or just be lazy and set the show picture command to none. With that all complete, click OK. Next, head to the player icon event. As before, copy and paste the page and set it to turn on with map size variable at one. Now, as we are increasing the mini map size by four times, we also need to adjust the events to do so, so change them to be multiplied by four. Additionally, we will also need to change the X to be our map image's new X number, so 250, and Y at zero. Then copy and paste the page, change the variable number, and show the picture to none again. Click OK. Now repeat the exact same process on the objective icons as well. And so, our pretty full mini-map turns into a bigger detailed map, and then goes away, and then reappears. This doesn't just have to be used for world maps, however. It's also handy to have for dungeons and marking treasure boxes, exits, and other events. Anyway, that's all for Echo's Somehow Turned Into a Novel tutorial on eventing mini-maps. Thanks to Endless Gaming Today for the inspiration. And I will see you next time, gamers!